Hello, fellow questers! It is I, Aaron Neville Quester, to introduce you to this almighty book, The Tiny Hero of Fernie Creek Library. Imagine what would happen if you were a bug living behind a tiny gap in the trunk. In, a, in the chalkboard, in a school where th that is full of tumbling people who could squish you in one step. Well, this is what it's like for Eddie and uh, and his very large family. Eddie is a small green bug who's right here, and he has a very good fondness for books, and he likes reading them. And he is very small, and he's very green and very bright. And the, all his adventure starts when, when his beloved Aunt Min goes missing. So Aunt Min and Aunt Min and and Eddie both loved very loved books. They loved reading them. They loved the stories. They memorized whole whole books, such and such. And what, and what Aunt Min loved the most was the library. And she had said that she would take Eddie when he was old enough. But one day, Aunt Min went to the library and did not return. And this is quite a big surprise. And that, Ed, and, um, this bug, Eddie, was very, very worried. And then, and then, and then he decided that he was going to go to save Aunt Min. And so he started on a journey. What was a short, around three minute walk to, from the classroom he was living in to the, to the library, for students at least, was actually like, a whole day's walk, like five hours or something. Hard hike, making you super tired and making you wipe out on your bed after you're done. That was the kind of walk that she went on. And she found out, finds out that Aunt Min has injured herself by, um, by she thought that she was going to read on, the, on a tablet like this, like like a tab, just like this tablet. It's an iPad, and and she was trying to read, but on the tablet. But then she she it was very very um slippery, like a skating rink, and she fell again and again, and she broke her back legs or something. And she was very banged up, and now she couldn't walk, and she had starved for like two days. And so first of all, Eddie fed her. And then uh, she was healing, they had a good hiding place, all things were going well. Until they find, find out what is going to happen to their beloved library. So, so the librarian, the old librarian that is, was pregnant. And so she, she couldn't come to the library again, so they need a new librarian. And that new librarian has put to be Mrs. Gritch. They called her the Gritch. And she was one of the nastiest person on, on this freaking book. And she is like so mean that she doesn't even deserve to be near books. He, she thinks that all books except every kind of fiction, fantasy, and mystery, any books with graphic novels or whatever, any of them is just rubbish to him. The only books to her that should exist is textbooks. And who likes to read textbooks, man? And so, so they know that they need to stop her because she's planning on turning the library into a testing room. It will be cold and dark filled with black glassy-eyed computers and there wouldn't be a good book in sight anywhere. And that was a big problem to the bugs and they felt very sad for they were very, rather attached to this very magical place, also known as the library. 
Eddie then Eddie has a very good idea. He decides that he use certain kinds of food and berries and candy. Like for example, um, for example, the first time he uses a blueberry, he pokes into it and he rip and he uses the juice. And what does he do with it? He writes on post-its, on stickies, and he writes a uh, writes a message after a few posts that is. And so every day he worked on a new post-it, and so the message came out. Please save the library. And the kids who are in there are very surprised, and they know it's like, whoa, I think it's her ghost. You see, there was a very old librarian several years, many years ago, who actually died in the library. And everyone thought that her, her spirit, a ghost, was haunting the library. And, the, and she was the one who was writing the notes, and she was the one who was saying to save the library. And then this became a big fuss, and the principal found out that the dead librarian's niece was actually a very famous author, and she might come to the library, and so the, she renamed the whole library to the honor, and the library was kind of safe. From the Grister. And this reminds me of Charles Webb and Aunt Min, that, that's the old book, actually mentioned it. Um, uh, Charles Webb is about a spider who's trying to save a pig named Wilbur from becoming bacon and pork chops by writing words in her web. And this is quite similar except Eddie, Eddie writing on post it, Charlotte write, writing on her webs, Eddie trying to save the library. Charla trying to save Wilbur, you know what I mean? I mean, and plus they're both bugs. Kind of bugs. They're smaller than the rest of us, if you know what I mean. And and this this is um one of like one of fifty something brothers and sis little brothers and sisters of Eddie and she she she's Alfie and she has a very loud voice. And she, and she is, she becomes a very good reader, like these three, like these, these two. And she is actually a quite good character, if you know, like, if you know to appreciate him. And overall, it's a very funny, hilarious book. And I really do wonder if bugs really think like that. I mean, I never thought about, whom. what would that book think about? I mean, come on, guys. Come on. Do you think about, hmm, there's a bug crawling on the floor. Should I step on it? That's what we think. They think, oh, no, what are they, what are we going to do? Should I find a crack? Should I, something, something. And I recommend it to you greatly because for once, it's not in a human's, human's view. And it's something entirely different. And I feel the magic of Linda Bailey, the author. And I think she made a really, she did a really good job capturing what would be, what you think would be real if bugs really had, um, good, very, rather, but enough, big enough IQ to talk and make colonies and whatever, read and stuff like that. But, anyways, forget all that goopy science stuff, and it's a very good book. And like always, a bookwester, a random bookwester.